Okay, I'm not seeing too many other people joining, which is okay. So this will be recorded. So if anyone needs to watch it again, you're totally able to. Um, but my name is Lena Eisen. I'm one of the admission counselors at Ohio Wesleyan. So thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Um, and tonight we're just going to kind of go over the basic overview of the Nursing Pathways Program at Ohio Wesleyan. Um, and to get us started, Dr. Dave Marquardt is going to introduce himself and give us a brief presentation about the Nursing Pathways Program. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen so Dave can go ahead and share his and we'll be all set to go. Thanks for being here. I think you might be muted. I always say, uh, give me another three years and I'll figure it out. Um, I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I'm, I I do that uh, more often than you think. Uh, what I was saying was thanks to everyone for coming. This is really exciting to be able to talk to people who are thinking about um, uh, coming to Ohio Wesleyan, sending their students uh, uh, to Ohio Wesleyan and thinking about nursing uh, while you're here. So let me go ahead and share my screen just to talk uh, real briefly about what the nursing pathway is. Um, it's actually plural. There are two nursing pathways and we'll describe those. Um, and then we'll uh, uh, turn, turn things over to our, our great uh, panelists. Yeah. There we go. So the, uh, the first thing to, to note, um, and in fact, there was a little bit of a, a misprint in the um, in the opening slide, that, that, and this is uh, understandable, a lot of people think we have a nursing major at Ohio Wesleyan. We don't. We're calling it a pathway now. We are uh, having some discussions about whether we want to have a pre-nursing major. It would be similar to the pre-med major, in which many of the courses which are required for this um, this this pathway would be would be essentially those those major courses. Uh, but right now, it's a collection of courses which um, students take in order to prepare themselves to uh, for automatic acceptance into Mount Carmel's College of Nursing, MCCN. So this affiliation agreement with Mount Carmel started in uh, early 2021, um, and uh, we've had a number of students uh, go uh, in the pathway and go through it, including Emily, who's going to talk to us um, a little bit later. But let me tell you a little bit about what the pathway really uh, involves. Uh, as I said, it's really pathways. It's plural. There's two of them. The first one is called the Advanced Placement Program. Um, this is unrelated to advanced placement um, uh, that you're used to thinking about for high school classes. This is uh, um, the, the same in name only. The Advanced Placement Program is um, essentially a pathway in which students at Ohio Wesleyan take courses over two years on OWU's campus, um, and then move on to Mount Carmel College of Nursing. So two years at OWU with five then five additional semesters at MCCN. Um, and at the end of that period of time, which can be, can be as fast as, as four years, but that involves summer work and sort of an accelerated path through OWU, um, one receives a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from MCCN. The other pathway is called SDAP for Second Degree Accelerated Program. This is what uh, uh, Elliot, I believe, is considering, and it's what Emily did. Um, and uh, the Second Degree Accelerated Program involves four years at Ohio Wesleyan in which you major uh, in whatever you want, um, and then 13 to 18 additional months at MCCN, depending on your course load and when you start and some other things. Um, and at the end of that period of time, you have two degrees. You have a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from Mount Carmel and a, a, either a BA or a BS, depending on what your major was, from Ohio Wesleyan. So let me talk a little bit uh, um, about the, the kind of coursework that's required uh, for these uh, programs. So starting with advanced placement program, um, the bulk of the courses, although not all, are in the biological and physical sciences. So here they are, intro cell biology, micro, this introduction to organic biochemistry. This is a single semester course, which encompasses uh, uh, general chemistry, organic chemistry, and biochemistry. Uh, human anatomy and physiology, and then a more advanced human physiology course, along with human nutrition 
and statistics. Statistics is in parentheses because it's not technically biological or physical science, but it's in the natural sciences division at Ohio Wesleyan, and it's a requirement. And then in addition, there are social science courses to take. Introduction to psychology is a requirement for the pathway. Uh, lifespan development, which is in the psychology department. Uh, and then health, culture, and society, which is in the sociology and anthropology department. And then finally, there are courses uh, in the humanities as well. Introductory religion course, an English composition course, uh, and a recommended course, although not formally required, is bioethics. Now, that's, uh, um, that's a, a, a full load for two years at Ohio Wesleyan. If you actually go through it, um, students who are doing the APP really only have room for two or three courses that aren't the courses we just listed. So, um, 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 th but there is some room to, to take something else of interest. The second degree accelerated program in which you get two degrees after four years at OWU involves the exact same courses as the APP um, plus any whatever courses are required to fulfill a major of your choosing and then all university and general education requirements. So uh, university requirements are things like a total number of courses, a certain number of upper level courses uh, and so on general education requirements uh, are the courses from, you know, from across uh, different disciplines focused in on different skills and competencies, uh, what we call a connection experience, which is an experiential or co-curricular experience is now going to be required, um, and the first year seminar, uh, uh, which uh, Feli has taken as well. These are the general ed requirements, and just like any student, so too do students doing the SDAP have to fulfill those. Additional requirements for, um, uh, for both um, pathways include no grade less than a C in the required courses, the courses I, I just listed. That's not uh, true for the, um, uh, the major courses, but it is true for the courses that transfer essentially over to MCCN. And then a min minimum cumulative GPA of 3.0. And then at some point, um, uh, students are asked to send a letter of intent to apply to Mount Carmel so that they know Ohio Wesleyan students are coming. And as I mentioned, as long as these requirements are all met, students are guaranteed acceptance into their program. Um, and then um, uh, an application to MCCN uh, is still required um, uh, to enter. Uh, so you might be wondering, and, and uh, Bill or anyone else, feel free to hop in if I have uh, made any kind of mistake or have not given enough detail on anything. But you might be wondering about how to choose or, or, or why um, one, uh, why to choose uh, such a pathway. Um, in both cases, um, coming to Ohio Wesleyan um, before um, uh, embarking on a, on, on a nursing uh, classes at MCS, MCCN give, gives you a chance to experience the things that Ohio Wesleyan has to offer. So for example, it might be um, playing a, an intercollegiate sport at the Division Three level. It might be getting involved in extracurricular activities involving music, the band, or, or, or other things, um, being involved with a fraternity or a sorority. Um, the question about APP versus SDAP is, is basically one of how soon uh, do you want to finish um, the degree? And there also might be some financial considerations for, for many. Um, one thing I can say though, and, and I know I've, uh, I've uh, had a conversation with, with Ellie and have offered advice in this regard. One thing that we like about the second degree accelerated program is that we think it gives students um, um, it gives them that second degree, which um, can be a, a real um, um, a real ace in the hole, right? It, it, that second degree is um, um, gives gives students essentially some confirmation um, and some alternative. If if it turns out that nursing isn't uh, for them, they've still got a different degree that they can employ. So that's one piece of it. But the other piece, and I think the more likely piece, is that second degree, the degree from Ohio Wesleyan, can really, I think, inform and enrich the education and, and, the, and the practice of nursing 
for those students who do go on to, to finish the Bachelor of Science in, in Nursing. So I think they come together and both are improved by the other uh, in a way which uh, um, um, I think Emily will probably speak to. So that's those are the programs. And I'm the, um, the pre-health advisor, I think, as um, Lena said, and, and uh, I meet with students who are interested in uh, going to medical school uh, or dental school or to nursing school or any other allied health area. Um, some of you might be wondering about other kinds of nursing uh, practice, so a registered nurse, an RN, uh, versus a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, versus perhaps a nurse practitioner. These are all just sort of different levels. Uh, uh, RNs require a little less uh, in terms of, uh, you know, classes and, and, and training than do Bachelor of Science, and that's reflected in a variety of different ways, including um, starting pay and including sort of responsibilities. Um, it's easier to begin a master's program in nursing, which is required to become a nurse practitioner if you're starting from a bachelor's of science, bachelor of science in nursing position. So there's a variety of different reasons to do the BSN route as, to, as opposed to the two-year RN route, although I'm sure that Bill could speak um, uh, to that if anyone has a, other questions. And so we'll finish with that and sort of open it up to um, to any of you and, and most interestingly to our, to our student panelists. And then I'll stop sharing. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. We appreciate it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to head back to the screen. Oh, it doesn't look like it's going to work right now. So that's okay. Maybe Dave, actually, do you want to go back and share your screen with that last prompt with the questions? And we'll just kind of keep that up for the rest of the time, if that's okay with you. Thanks, perfect. Um, so I think we can go ahead and introduce the panelists that are with us. So you've already heard from Dr. Mark Wart and I, but we also have um, a current student, a student who's graduated and actually done the Mount Carmel program as well, um, and a representative from Mount Carmel. So, so why don't we start with Bill? Do you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself and then we'll move to Emily and Ellie? And I think you might be muted. There, I'm learning from Dave. Um, I'm Bill Krauss. I'm the interim vice president for enrollment management at Mount Carmel. Um, so if you have any questions about the admissions process, financial aid, I can do my best to answer those uh, tonight as well. Thanks, Emily. Hi, my name is Emily. I graduated from Ohio Westland in 2021, and then I just recently finished the Mount Carmel SDAP program. That's 13 months just last Friday. So, Awesome. Way to go, Emily. Super exciting. Um, and then Ellie, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself as well? Hi, I'm Ellie. Um, I'm a freshman here at Ohio Wesleyan, and I am in the four-year nursing program as well as working on a business management degree. And I play field hockey and I am in a sorority here at Ohio Wesleyan. Great, thank you. Um, so I think we can just go ahead and move on into our first question. And if anyone else on the panel wants to bring up a question that they think is important, feel free. Um, I think now's a good time for our folks that are watching the webinar in our audience, there is a Q and A option. So just like Dr. Mark Ward said, if you have any questions, feel free to send those through the Q&A and then we can ask those during the panel or maybe after. Um, so one question that I think is important and I think Dr. Mark Work kind of touched on a little bit is maybe why you would recommend joining the nursing field right now. Um, I don't know if anyone has anything to say about that. Maybe Bill or Emily, since you guys are kind of right in it. Um, but go ahead, whoever wants to speak that first. Sure, I'll, I'll take it. I mean, it's, it's quite simply, it's there's a tremendous amount of demand for nurses. So it's a great time for the profession. Um, I, the other thing I, I firmly believe that the reputation for the profession is at its highest level. It was high going into COVID. And I think after coming out of COVID, the heroic type of work that nurses did during COVID did nothing but help uh, expand the reputation of nurses just overall. Um, and of course, with high demand, usually then and I think it would be good for Emily, maybe if she could just speak to this sort of her experience just recently selecting a position. It's just 
there are choices available um, for folks. And the other thing which I'm generally happy about, it's also has spurred the increase in graduate programs for nursing. So it really is letting folks know who are going into the field that they have this and this can be a very rewarding career and uh, opportunities that exist by continuing their education and getting graduate degrees as well. Absolutely, if I could go off of that, um, like my mom always likes to tell me, if there's people, there's a hospital. If there's a hospital, there's always nursing jobs. Um, I think if job stability in general is a huge benefit in the whole nursing thing, and on top of that as well, there's such a shortage of nurses right now that, I mean, you can really move anywhere you want. If you want to travel anywhere and just start a new life, there's a hospital there. You can get a job. And sure, every hospital is different. But I mean, like Bill said, nursing right now has such, you know, a positive, you know, vibe to it right now. So you can't really, you can't go wrong. Thanks. Anyone else want to add anything? Are we feeling okay? I'll just, I'll uh, just from my perspective as, you know, not from, uh, you know, not from Owu or as, a, as the advisor, but just as a son to an 80 year old mother who has uh, been in the hospital and has gotten through uh, COVID, um, but who has, uh, you know, had various illnesses. I can tell you that it, uh, it, it's, it's completely true that she, um, when, the, when the physician comes in the room, she's often on edge, she's a little nervous, uh, she doesn't say much, and then the nurse comes in and the nurse is, is the person she really seeks and goes to and, and that nurse, uh, some, some, some wonderful nurses that she's had, uh, have really interpreted the physician for her in ways that help her understand. So the sort of patient contact, that's really important, I think, to a lot of young people who wanna perhaps go in to medicine uh, is something that that happens in the nursing field or can can happen to a great extent. Thank you. All those perspectives were were really helpful. Um, so I think we're going to go ahead to our next question. We do have some questions in the Q and A, which we'll move to at the end. Um, but I would love to know maybe from Ellie um, why you chose OWU's Nursing Pathways program. I know that Dr. Markwart spoke a little bit about the extracurriculars you're able to participate in as a student at OWU um, and some of those things too. So maybe you could speak to why you chose the program and maybe what else you're involved in. Yeah, so I chose Ohio Wesleyan in general just because I really enjoyed the field hockey program here. And then when I came here and I learned about the nursing program, I thought it was a perfect experience for me um, because I was happy enough to also be able to major in business, which I have wanted to do just because it's sort of general and you can do a lot of stuff with that. But I also am very passionate about nursing and taking care of other people. So that was also a big part of it was that I could do both at the same time and also be involved in field hockey for all four years. And now that I've joined a sorority, like I have other things going on. And I'm also really excited about all the opportunities here at Ohio Wesleyan, which I feel like really drew me to the school as a whole. But then the nursing program just kind of sealed the deal for me personally. Awesome. Thank you. Emily, I know that you didn't come to OWU knowing that you wanted to do nursing, but maybe can you chat about um, some transferable skills that you had from OWU that have really helped you um, in the program or now that you've graduated? Yeah, so like Ellie said, I came to OWU, I actually swam there all four years and I was in Cap Alpha Theta, which is sorority on campus. Um, I would say the biggest thing, OWU definitely pushed me as a student and going into an accelerated program, honestly, if I don't, I don't think if I didn't go to OWU first, I wouldn't have succeeded as well as I did because it is fast paced and they, you know, they expect you to keep up with all your work and they expect you to follow the deadlines and there's not, you know, leniency. And that's just also the profession. And I think OWU really holds those core values of you need to get your work done, but also the professors at OWU and at Mount Carmel both listen to you. They are there for you. They want to see you succeed. But again, the professionalism is really transferable. 
Thank you. Does anyone, maybe Dave or Bill, do you want to add anything to why some students might choose the pathway program? If not, that's totally okay. So one, one thing I can say is that a lot of students don't really don't really know so much about what they want to do. They'll say, um, like a lot of students will come in and they'll say, I'm pre-med. Um, and they'll say that um, often because, you know, students just generally have don't have a wide range of, of, uh, of professions that they that they really know about. And 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 being in the medical profession or being a physician is something that 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 people know it pays well and has standing in our society and that kind of thing. But it's not for everybody. Um, and yet a lot of people want to be involved in healthcare um, without having to do what it takes to get into medical school. And uh, and that's a really neat option. You know, there are so many ways to be involved in healthcare without having to be a, a physician. Um, and in fact, being a physician isn't really right for everybody. It's a very unique set of tasks and uh, and, and so on. So I just really am excited about the um, the the options that are there for students. You know, many students will go down a pre med path. Very easy to pivot onto the SDAP uh, pathway if they feel that they definitely want to be involved in health healthcare, but are thinking that that going the, the uh, medical school route isn't for them. So um, those kinds of, of options, which remain open, you're not tracked in one direction from, um, from the get-go um, is really nice. Again, we're talking about that second degree program. The accelerated program is fairly uh, inflexible. It's it's because yet you, you have to get quite a number of classes done um, uh, before transferring. But that second degree program is is a little bit more uh, for, more flexible for sure. Great, thank you, Dave. Um, so I think moving on to a question that might be more directed at Bill and maybe Emily as well. Um, kind of wondering what does the nursing program look like at Mount Carmel? What can you kind of expect after you graduate from OWU and you're going into an environment that's really different? Um, what does your class schedule look like? What do your rotations look like? Maybe, yeah, if you could speak to that, that'd be wonderful. What I can do is I can speak to the structure and then Emily can speak to, okay, what does that structure really mean in regard to what you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, so I'll just explain a little bit about the advanced placement program. The advanced placement program, as Dave mentioned, requires a summer. So the summer is what you have to do after you're accepted into the program. In essence, you're coming to us after your sophomore year, but you you have to, and I'm putting this in quotes, you have to make up the nursing courses that are required for our students to take as part of that sophomore year experience. So that's what you take in the summer. So it's very condensed. Bill, I think you mute. You are muted for some reason. I don't know why. Still muted. Try again. There you go. Okay. Yep. So after you were speaking about summer classes, <laughs> and then it muted. <laughs> um, so there is a summer program where you have to take your nursing uh, courses that you would not have taken so far uh, during your sophomore year. So that's why the summer program is set up to get those three nursing courses done. And then you enter the program as a junior, as a, any other junior that we have at, at our campus. And then you follow the, the curriculum from that point forward. The second degree is different in the sense that, and I'll turn it over to Emily in a second. It's different in the sense that first you have two options. You can do it as a 13 month option, or you can do it as an 18 month option. Uh, the 13 month option just by definition alone is much more condensed and and therefore we we tend to discourage students from working or doing much more than just focusing on their studies over that 13 month period the 18 month uh, option is a little bit and it's in some ways it's more of a traditional type program where you do have then the flexibility to do other things if you wanted to work or or, or had other obligations uh, we do find it's about a 50-50 split of students who choose a 13-month option versus the 18-month option. The good thing is, is some it starts out into the 13-month option and they realize it's too much, too fast, too quick. You can convert over to the 18-month option and get that com completed as well. Um, and so I did that, that's structurally how the courses are managed. As I said, the advanced placement one is more traditional once you get through that summer program where the uh, the second degree program, the STEP program, 
has a couple options which offer a little bit of flexibility for students. Great, thank you. Emily, can you maybe speak to your student experience? Absolutely. So like I said, I was part of the 13 month program. So I can't, I do understand that the 18 month program, they start before the 13 month program. The 13 month program starts in January. And then it also extends, I believe, into March when the 13 month finishes in February. Um, the 13 month program. So the first semester, they're, they're called semesters, but they're kind of, I look at them more like chunks. So you'll end up having eight different clinical rotations, your longest being med surge, which medical surgical and transitions, which is your senior year. Um, let's see, you do go all year. So you start from January and you finish in February. There's the longest break you'll have is two weeks in December for Christmas. Um, honestly, I like the shorter breaks because then you can't forget much and you're already in the testing zone. So there's not much change going on. Um, your shortest clinical rotations will be through your mental health rotation, your pediatric rotation, and your maternal newborn rotation. And those would be four weeks. Um, another difference between the 13 month program and 18 month program is 13 month clinical times are during the weekdays. And the 18 month program is only on weekends. So you should also take that into account. I think if you're 13 month that needs the weekends, you can flip, but I'm not really sure if that's vice versa with the 18 month or not, because that did not apply to me. But I mean, other than that, if you're in the 13 month program, it is stacked. I think at one point I was taking five courses at one time. So you do spend most of your day waking up, getting your work done, putting in a lot of hours, but it flies by, so it doesn't feel that long. And I think you mentioned earlier, which was a really good point, that your experience at Ohio Wesleyan with a challenging course load, you felt yeah. like that prepared you really well. Absolutely. The program you went into, yeah, which I think is a really good point to mention as well. Absolutely. Um, anyone else want to add anything on that one? Seems like pretty much a Bill Emily question. <laughs> Actually, well, I, have a quick, I have a question for Ellie. Um, and, and, and so Ellie, you, you are, um, doing the second degree program and you're pairing that with a business major, um, which doesn't have essentially, you know, except for some of the general ed requirements, doesn't have really any overlap at all. Have you considered doing a double major in something like biology in which many of the courses that you're taking would count towards the biology major and pairing that with your business major? Yeah, I have. Um, I know next year they're adding a public health major, which I've been sort of looking into as doing my double major, but I've definitely been considering the biology just because it would be so easy and I wouldn't have to take very many more classes, but I'm waiting on the public health major to see what that looks like before I decide what to do with the other stuff, but I'm definitely planning on adding a double major to it of some sort. Well, that's that's exciting. Yeah, we're the, the the public health major will be coming online in the fall, and we're excited. And we think it'll be kind of a natural for students in the nursing program to pair their nursing classes with with public health and uh, and, and maybe something additional, or, or or maybe just that as their primary. Um, so, and then, and then a question for for Emily: um, Could you 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 got a, sort of our uh, zoology degree and uh, which is sort of like a gen general biology degree at Ohio Wesleyan. Um, were there courses that you didn't take that you wish you had that would have made it easier um, and vice versa? Were there courses that you did take that you're glad you did uh, that were really aligned for? Um, um, and, and I'm talking specifically about courses that maybe you, you weren't required to take for the SDAP. Interesting question. Let's see. I mean, one of the biggest courses that I think most new nursing students are, you know, nervous for is pathophysiology. Because I mean, it's what what the body's doing wrong and no one likes to think about that. But I know hearing from a lot of traditional nursing students that, you know, were in undergrad the same time I was at OWU would always complain about it. And that one made me nervous. Um, I will say I'm glad that, you know, I did take microbio 
at OWU because I think that gave me a strong foundation. Um, but I mean, I think maybe an intro or maybe touching on more pathophysiology would be a little helpful. I mean, honestly, I'm just glad I got to take classes outside of the major and outside of nursing. I took a lot of um, like English courses, which I never would have imagined myself doing if you would have told me in high school, but I did because I loved the you know, department and I had a few professors who I just couldn't seem to get away from. But, you know, I think it was nice being a well-rounded student and then going into something more streamlined. That's well, great. I don't know if you're able to answer this question, um, but do you have any suggestions, kind of like what Dave was asking Emily about what you would suggest students maybe take or are prepared for before they start the program? It's interesting that I'm, I'm, seeing, I, I'm a big fan of the STAP program. And so what I did this past fall is kind of look back and see what undergraduate degrees students had coming into the program. They were all over the map. There was a philosophy major. There was a business major. There was an education major. There was even an engineer. So it, it, it really, I, I think that just goes to the nature of the program that it just takes students where they're at and, and, and helps them get to where they want to go with a with a with a career in nursing and yeah there, there, we have a lot of students but I think this the way the program's structured at Ohio Wesleyan is wonderful because you really keep students on track so they don't have to take some additional courses after they graduate but that's an option that students do as Emily mentioned we do have a program that starts in in January so let's say if you've graduated and maybe there were one or two courses that you were still lacking you can still get those done in the fall to start and stay on track to enter the program in, in the springtime as well. So there really isn't, I wish it, I was hoping that there was some common thread through the BS staff students and there really wasn't. It just, each of them come to their own decision that this is something that they would like to do and this is the career that they want to pursue. Great, thank you. Dave? So I have a question again for Emily. So when you come in as an SDAP student, and this is for Bill as well, uh, are you with a cohort of other SDAP students or are you with uh, the Mount Carmel students who are in their last year? You're with your cohort. And so, your cohort is all students who came in with already having a, a BA or a BS. Yes, so okay. we all had a degree previously and because how large, I guess, the singular cohort is you're split up into two tracks. So there's track one and track two. I was a part of track two. It really just meant that we were taking different clinicals at mm -hmm. the same time. That way we wouldn't overrun the hospital. Mm -hmm. and so it must have been kind of neat then to have to be part of a cohort with people who have a wide range of interests and backgrounds and training and all sorts of different things. Oh, absolutely. And the age gaps between people too, very neat to see. I became friends with a 52-year-old father of two who helped run a golf course for 15 years prior and was a golf pro. And it was like, well, how did you stumble over into this? And he was like, you know, I just realized I loved people and I think this is where I'm supposed to be. And I was like, you amaze me, but that is awesome. And it's cool that we're all working towards the same goal and we all still keep in touch with a group me which is very awesome as well. So it's a good group of people. That's great. That's really cool here to hear Emily, nice. Um, so another question that actually kind of relates to this with people of very different interests and but kind of connecting over something um, is the OU connection, which Dave has a large part to play in. Um, and I would love to know maybe Dave or Emily and Ellie also if you have any thoughts about what are maybe some experiences students could have at Ohio Wesleyan in the OU Connection that would prepare them for a nursing program following, um, or just like some cool pre-health opportunities that students have had at Ohio Wesleyan? So I'll, I'll jump in, I'll just say a couple of things about that. So uh, just so for those uh, uh, who don't know, um, the Ohio Wesleyan Connection is essentially our signature program of experiential and co-curricular activities related to research or, or travel away, uh, internships or service in community learning. Um, and and coming this, this, this coming year will be a requirement for all students uh, to, um, to, to undertake such an experience before they 
before they graduate. Uh, we're not too worried about that as a requirement because um, uh, our, our data suggests almost all of our students were doing these kinds of experiences uh, on their own before it was uh, involved in the general education requirements. Um, but uh, those kinds of things that students who are particularly interested in, in healthcare, they, they, can, they can engage with the connection a wide variety of ways. So, so some have done shadowing experiences or, um, or, um, or research internships at hospitals in, you know, I'm thinking of two, one at Cleveland Clinic and one at the University of Cincinnati, where students interested in medicine um, uh, work with, uh, with um, um, MDs or MD PhDs or PhDs in areas related to human health. Um, and then shadowing with alumni. We have an ongoing shadowing program through our Career Connection Office. And then we've had uh, pre-meds and students interested in, um, in nursing and on the nursing pathway uh, um, uh, participate in the Theory to Practice grant program, this uh, program in which students write a proposal and get funded um, to do something, which often includes international travel. So uh, there was a student who was interested in public health uh, who I'm thinking of, who uh, went to London and interviewed a range of different people to try to do a comparison study between the public health system as it exists in um, um, Great Britain and, and, and compared to the U.S. Um, and they were funded for that experience, uh, including the travel through the OWU connection. But Ellie and, and Emily probably, uh, certainly Emily has, has, has done some of these things and Ellie is probably planning on it. So I'll, I'll hand the mic over to you two. I mean, I always think it's great to shadow prior to going and, you know, doing what you think you could do for the rest of your life. Um, I mean, I do, I didn't do a ton with the O connection just because I was busy with other things, but I did have a friend who, she is now in PA school actually, and she went abroad, I believe to the Netherlands or something, or to look at their public health system and compare it back to the US's. And I remember her, it was a class and I know her and her classmates had a great time and they learned a ton. And I remember her presenting her project to me at the end. And I was like, wow, you know, I was a little jealous of that, but you know, it wasn't my time, but I'm glad other people can have their moment. Yeah, I am unsure what I would like to do as since I'm only a freshman, but I know shadowing would be a great experience, but I would really like to go abroad somewhere and study something, which I'm hoping adding a public health major will help with, definitely. But I'm just a little unsure now, but I'm very excited for OE, OO connection in the future. One thing I can say, um, uh, I keep black, black, blanking the screen here for so, in, in some way. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Maybe I'm... I'm uh... Mine was doing the same thing. I think you can just X out and we'll just do our faces. But there, there, we oh, go. there you go, you're back. I was going to say that that, that um, many students who are taking, uh, um, um, a, 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 who have a major or an area of interest or a pathway that has a lot of science classes, including lab classes, are under the impression that travel experiences um, are difficult or impossible for them to do. Uh, we work really, we work really hard with our um, science students to make that an option and to make sure that with with high quality um, advising, uh, the dog just came in to say hi here. Uh, with high quality advising, that um, that that they can really do those kinds of um, experiences. Uh, and we can make sure that the kinds of courses that will transfer back from a semester abroad, for example, um, are, are appropriate for their course of study. But, but Emily alluded to a different way to travel abroad, and that's through travel learning courses. Um, and there are, um, there are typically, um, you know, four to six courses offered every year, which have a significant travel component, typically an international travel component. Um, these are normal courses. Students take the class, the tests, the essays all semester long, but then there's usually a 10-day to two-week trip right there in May uh, that goes somewhere, uh, someplace that is um, intimately related to the topic of the course. Uh, and that's a great way for students to experience international travel in the context of their education without having to take a full summer or a full semester, uh, which not everybody uh, can or wants to do. Student athletes, for example, have commitments that uh, that may um, 
that uh, that may keep them on campus, but they can still do travel away. So just a couple of the things related to um, um, to the connection. Thank you. So we have just a few minutes left, um, and it looks like we have a couple of questions in the Q and A box. So I don't know if there's anyone who feels like they want to share anything else before we move on to Q and A that we haven't touched on. Jelly Beans, anything else? Cool. Okay. So the first question we have is, um, someone asked, "Are we able to pick our schedule with nursing classes at Ohio Wesleyan University?" So can someone maybe clarify that question? So I'll take that one. Um, when you're at OWU and you've got those courses to take, you'll work with your uh, both your normal academic advisor, uh, who is typically a faculty member in whatever major area you're in, but also with, with me. Um, and, um, and those courses can fit in a lot of different ways. There's definitely not an inflexible set of courses that have to be taken at one point or, or, or another for the SDAP program. The APP program is a little different. We really have a set of courses that kind of need to be taken in order. And, and uh, um, um, but, but SDAP, there's a little bit more flexibility. So Ellie, how many courses have you taken so far, including the ones you're in right now that, that um, are part of the transfer courses for, for Mount Carmel? Um, I believe I've only taken three, including right now. I guess four if you count my statistics class. So only about half my credits so far have been with the nursing program. That's a lot. So that's great. You've made a very good good start in, in one year to have four courses already uh, on, on the book. So that's a, in fact, that's faster than a lot of people. A lot of people will have maybe two or three. So um, yeah, so, so the answer to the question, can you pick your schedule with nursing classes? Absolutely. Um, you work with, you work with faculty uh, to, uh, uh, you know, to identify the, the, the courses that are best for you. Thank you. Another student is asking, are high school students able to participate in this program? They are not. This is just a college level program, but we appreciate your question. Um, someone else is asking, okay, this is a really good question. If you choose the APP nursing program, do you graduate from Ohio Wesleyan or Mount Carmel? The latter. You, if you use the, adva the advanced placement program, the APP, uh, you end up with a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from Mount Carmel. You don't get uh, a degree from Ohio Wesleyan if you do that program. You benefit from the Ohio Wesleyan courses for those two years and for you know, and in the other ways, but um, but it's just not enough time to fulfill the requirements for a OU degree. Thank you. And then one more, um, a student is asking, how can I join the 13 month program? Um, so Bill, maybe do you wanna talk about the application process for that or Dave? Are they through the, Ohio Wesleyan, or is it? That's what I'm going to. That's what I'm going to assume. Yes. Okay. So, so I can just. And this is something I was just going to mention. Generally, there is that letter of intent that um, that is part of the agreement, and we encourage students to do that sooner than later, even if there's still a little bit of a debate whether they plan to do it or not. That way, we know you're out there, and therefore we can keep in communication with you as you progress toward your. Um, bachelor's degree at Ohio Wesleyan. So it's just a good that you do it sooner, doesn't commit you to anything, and it just lets us know that you're out there. So if there are some programmatic changes, we obviously would let Dave know, but we want to make sure the student is aware of it as well. So that's that's the only thing, that's what, that would be my only encouragement is to do that letter of intent sooner than later. And and Bill, that letter of intent is is pretty straightforward. It's just basically identifying themselves saying what their plans are when they'll graduate from OWU and that they are intending to do this SDAP, right? Or the APP, yeah. Great. Well, those are all the questions that we had in the Q&A. So if anyone wants to add any last thoughts or things before we go, now's a great time. Um, if not, it was really nice to have all of you here. Thanks for being here. Um, this will all be recorded or it was all recorded. So it'll be available on our website um, under Bishop 
plus nursing pathways program so if there's anything you missed you can always feel free to head back and watch it again but thanks for being here everyone we appreciate it and have a great rest of your night